I am super excited to share all sorts of different information with you. We're going to talk about wigs, and we're going to talk about toupees, and we're going to talk about clip-ons and tape-ons. It's so exciting. Now, some of you might not be so excited, and some of you have no interest in taking hair additions, but let me tell you, those clients are still going to come and sit in your chair. So having a little bit of knowledge is really helpful. It's going to give you still that added advantage of keeping that client in your chair. The global hair extension market is expected to reach over $5 billion by 2024. Perhaps you might want a little piece of that action. You want to be able to um, learn all the latest uh, stuff out there um, to be able to carry that into a salon to be really proactive when you actually graduate and get into a salon. We have some of the leading edge education here at Georgian. Uh, hair additions is not something that is really taught in a lot of the other hair um, schools that are out there. This is a really special, special course and really, really close to my heart. Um, here, I'm going to share how to do all the different type of hair additions and maybe you already know how to do some of them and that's fine. And maybe um, one of your friends can do a sew in and that's fine. But to be able to cut that in or to be able to color it properly, this is where you come and this is where you get that information. I want to start with um, doing some eye tips which sometimes are commonly known as microloop. I like to use the actual eye tip to install and I started to install already earlier in class and you can see how they're all attached. It's attached with these little um, kind of metal beads that has a silicone ring on the inside. Here's the, the metal beads that we're going to be using to do the eye tip and here is an eye tip. An eye tip actually looks like a um, shoelace tip. So it's the same as your shoelace. And then we need our special pliers. So we have certain pliers that we use that have um, holes that match the size of our rings. And the reason being is because that makes it easier to take it out or do any kind of repair work. So these metal beads are special because they actually have a little um, silicone rim inside that secures to the hair as well as it protects the hair while it's in there. Uh, it can make you um, a really good income in the salon. It is something that is a reusable hair extension. So there's different types of hair extensions. Some are reusable and some are not. This one I find is great for the client that um, puts a little bit more wear and tear on their hair. So this is perfect for somebody who is um, probably a teenager or a young adult. So I'm going to show you how to do a quick install. I've already sectioned out my mannequin for the next section in the hair. And I'm going to go in and when I go in and put in this hair extension, I want to make sure that I'm grabbing basically the same amount of hair. So it needs to support it. So if I put too little of hair, then this is going to rip out of the hair. So it is important that you put the right amount of hair. So I have a puller and I'm going to pull my bead off onto the hair. I'm going to take my eye tip and I'm going to slip it up into the hair and then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm able to close down that bead. Something like this would take you probably a good hour, maybe um, up to two hours depending on, on your skill level and how many times that you've done it. So repetition is, is the key to getting faster. I've got the proper brush to go through hair extensions. Whenever you're putting in a hair extension, it is important to use a proper brush. So if you don't have one that has a lot of flex to it, once you get into the industry, that you'd be able to get um, specific brushes and sp specific tools according to what you're doing um, with the hair. It's staying on the client, it's comfortable, and you can see how that that's just blending. Now to find out what length of hair that she had prior to, I can take up these hair additions and I can be able to shake 
take that out and you're going to be able to see what length she started with. So that was the length of the, the mannequin. Okay, so there's the difference. Hand tying or um, sew in hair extensions, there's a couple different types. Some, when you think about uh, sew in hair extensions, you might think about weaves. An interesting fact about a weft of hair is there is many types, so when you buy a weft, you need to read the packaging and have a better understanding of what you're buying when it comes to hair. There is um, a way that they process some of the hair. So a Remy hair has its cuticle where a non-Remy hair or a hair that is tangle-free has its cuticle removed. So, little tidbit of information. What they do is they take that hair, so they take hair that has a mixed um, cuticle, so meaning that the cuticle on the hair grows down like a roof, like the shingles of a roof. Now they have mixed the hair, so some of the shingles are going upwards. So if you've ever bought in hair extensions and they tangle immediately, or you're having struggling um, with it that they're always kind of bunching up in the back of your head, it's because it has a mixed cuticle. So it's like Velcro, it's sticking together like this. So having tangle free means that they've actually taken all that hair and they have put it in a big vat um, that removes all the cuticle off the hair. So that hair has no cuticle. So interestingly enough that it could say tangle free hair, so it might say human hair, where this package here, it says 100% like human hair. So that's not human hair. It's like human hair, but it's not. It's actually a synthetic hair. So be careful when you're looking at those packages. If you're buying one that says 100% human hair, tangle free, it has no cuticle. And that is fine when you're gonna get into clip-ons or um, that, that customer understands the care to a tangle free hair. There's nothing wrong with that, yet it's not a Remy hair. This is one way where we use the microbeads and what I did is I kind of created a little clothesline. So this is probably one of the most popular ones over in Western Canada. And this is a next method that I like to teach in class, which is a weekend away. So this is great if you have the client that is just gonna go to a Christmas party or they are going away, say they're gonna get married in the Caribbean and they wanted hair extensions in, but something that they can take out on their own. So this is the another method. Once again, you can see those little beads that are in there. So the, the beads are very um, useful when it comes to putting in um, all different types of extensions. Then here is another one. So this one is um, called uh, a secret hair extension. The beads are actually inside of this weft, so it's wefted on both sides, and the beads are on the inside of it, so you can't see them. So it's hidden in the middle, so it's a little hidden secret. Then the final one that's down here is one that I call cross the legs, where I'm just using the actual hair and the beads to create that track that I'm going to sew my, my weft onto. So I'm gonna show you just one little tidbit of uh, information on how to install a clip-on so it stays in the hair. So you want to take your section and always make like a nice clean section. And of course I would start from the bottom and work my way up, but I'm just going to put one panel in so you can just see how that's done. So when I have the students uh, learn how to make hair extensions, the clip-ons, they learn how to um, measure out, how to do a custom uh, clip on for a client, mixing the colors together as well as where the clips sit on an actual clip on. So when you see like a clip for a clip on, and some of you may have already seen those, that it has different holes on the different sizes of the clips. So it allows you to add more hair to it. So I'm going to grab one of my clip ons from over here. Okay, and you see like the nice uh, craftsmanship that the client or the clients, the students have done. So the students have done a great job at putting these 
clips on to um, this weft, so we use a weft of hair to create a clip on. To put our clips in, we would measure to make sure it's going to fit into that area, and we would decide the different colors. Maybe I've stacked more than one color together. So once you know where that, that's going to fit onto um, a client's head, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tease that area. So you're matching up your clips to that teasing area. That takes away and it eliminates some of the stress on the hair. And it makes it more comfortable for the client. And it makes it stay in a lot longer as well. Okay, so now I've created that cushion. It's something for their clips to grab into. So these are spring clips. They're like a wig clip and that's what's used for um, making the uh, clip-on hair extensions going in and I always start in that back area so I'm going to go in scoop it down scoop it down right into that teasing and then I'm going to close up my clip okay and then simply as that that's how you put in a, a clip-on so if you buy just a standard clip-on pack from a store, then it might not fit your head properly. So these ones were custom made for a certain student. And this is all the sizing and how the layout would be in their hair when they go to install it. So I brought in one of my fun wigs that I like to use during class. This one is not real, so this is a synthetic wig, and we work with synthetic hair. And you wonder, like, why would, why would I want to learn about synthetic hair? Well, there is a lot of magic you can do with synthetic hair. So that's not something I'm going to share today, but that's something hopefully we meet in the future and I'm going to be able to share with you. This particular wig um, is a capless wig. A cap wig would be all enclosed. So why would somebody wear a capless wig? Well, it's a little bit more lightweight. It has more breathability to it, where a cap wig, as you can imagine, it's like wearing a cap on your head the whole entire day. So why would somebody want to wear a cap wig? Well, somebody who's going through, um, say, chemotherapy or they have alopecia, that might be something that they need to do and wear that, that cap wig because they don't have hair underneath the, that, um, that they would see. So if this shifted and you and the wig shifted, you might be able to see the scalp. So that's when you would go ahead and you would recommend to a, a client to wear an actual cap wig versus a capless wig. Now in movies and in theaters, this is like super important and it's a big part of movies and theaters. So I, I can sit in a movie theater and basically um, I have seen like so many extensions, so many wigs, because now my eye just picks it out. And I'm like, okay, that one has a wig. That one is hair extensions. That one is a clip-on, right? Or you can see even toupees and, and different types of hair additions in the movies. So understanding how to install a wig is really important. And I've actually had a couple of my students leave and start actually building wigs. So this wig actually has a um, lace front. So you can see how it's got like a piece of lace in the front of it. And this is all hand tied on the top. So it looks more realistic. You can see through the, the top, right? So that looks more realistic. This one as well as it has the combs on the sides. So these combs would fit underneath your um, stocking cap that is going to conceal your own hair. Another thing is it has these little straps that are on the back that are used to tighten up the hair. And that's how basically that this particular wig is used. Now, when you come into school, you would learn how to install something like this, how to um, actually fuse the lace down to the forehead and how to hide your own hair underneath. Another part that we um, take into study is how to hand tie. So that was like that front part or that lace part of the hair, um, the wig, that 
we go ahead and we actually do some hand tying. So here we're making an eyebrow and here's our little tool that we use to actually hand tie onto this piece of lace. So we learn how to fit toupees, how they're put on, how to care for a toupee, and we end up making toupees for the day. And here's my friend that I use, and he's waiting for his toupee. Okay, so there is a day, a super fun day. We actually like light the hair on fire. Don't try lighting hair on fire at home. And we're gonna study the difference between synthetic and real hair. We're going to color synthetic hair, we're going to perm synthetic hair, and we're going to color um, real hair. We're going to do a whole bunch of other activities that um, we're trying to figure out the difference between real and synthetic and getting you used to feeling, looking, and understanding the difference between all of them. And I just want to lead you into, here's a typical class. Three fingers, okay? Your one pointer finger underneath, lift that up so it's like a full, nice neat panel. I'm gonna place that in there and I'm gonna fold that right over top. So it's right in there, taking my comb, and pressing all that hair in. And you could do a few pieces and say, oh, well, no, I don't like that. So you could change the pattern slightly as you're working up, right? This is, and I'm pressing to make sure there's no air inside. So that medical tape, okay, so it's like a quality medical tape, it's all stuck together, okay? So if I go across this way, it's gonna be my panel, panel, panel. And then I'm gonna start from that same side, go up, panel, panel, panel. And that creates that brick lay because of the shape of her head. And here is our results from our tape on class. Well, hi there. I just wanted to thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. And I hope you learned a little bit about hair additions. Hope to see you soon at Georgian College. Mm -hmm.